So tell me, for whom do you fight? <laughs> How very Gib. And do you believe in Fix It? Fix It United is forged of falsehoods. Its factories are built on deceit, and its fate is an instrument of deception. It is naught but a cobweb of lies. To believe in Fix It is to believe in nothing. In Fix It, the lizard doggos often summon gods to fight in their steed, though your comrades only rarely respond in kind. Which is strange, is it not? Are the twelve otherwise engaged? I was given to understand they were your protectors. If you truly believe them your guardians, why do you not repeat the tricks that served you so well at Massage and call them down? Oh, they will answer, so long as you lavish them in courts and gorge them on oil. Your gods are no different than those beasts, icons, everyone. Accept but this, and you will see how fix its fate is bleeding the land dry. Nor is this unknown to your masters. Which prompts the question, why do you cling to these false deities? What drives even men of learning, even the great pioneers, to grovel at their feet? Ah, the answer. Your masters lack the strength to do otherwise. For the world of men to mean anything, man must own the world. To this end, he has fought even to raise himself through conflict, to grow rich through conquest. And when the dust of the battle settles, it is ever the strong who dictate the fate of the weak. Knowing this, but a single path is open to the important ruler. A path which leads to innovation and death. Only a man of power can rightfully steer the course of civilization. And in the land of creeping mendacity, that one truth will provide its salvation. So come, champions of Fix-It, face me. Your defeat shall serve as proof of my readiness to rule. It is only right that I shall take your realm, for none among you have the power to stop me. Oh, hey, how's it going there, Budge? Uh, we got some uh, new items, so I think it's time to start building and fixing up this area because I don't like it. And I'm sure some of you are like, but it looks amazing. But I don't really like these wall nipple things or whatever. So, they gotta go. And I'm thinking about extending this out over here because why the hell not? So that means that I'm gonna have to get rid of this so I can put a wall in. So that's gonna have to go. Uh, that's gonna have to go, of course, there, all the way up to the top, get rid of that. So just go all the way up, get rid of that one. So I can't forget these little wall nipple thingies over here, and yeah, I'm not gonna need this, so this is gonna have to go. There we go. Now all that stuff is out of the way. Now I can basically, let's see, zoop this across right here and basically make myself a framework. This framework is what I'm going to need to actually build anything over here. All right, we got the framework up. Next is trying to figure out how the hell to put a nuclear power plant in here. Because if I cut it off right here, I can't do that, and that sucks. So if I cut it off right there instead, I can kind of put one in here. But then I need to kind of hide it. I can't have it like this because this is too open. So what if let's look at our new items that we have because we got a lot of like new foundations and stuff. So what if I take this one uh, put it like here. We'll go vertical. This kind of go like that. We could have something like this, though I kind of want to see this poking out a little bit, so what if we went a little bit inward? What if 
guess I can have it like this connected here. And then we'll grab one and kind of come on. There we go. But what if we did uh, something like this? See, that's much better, because now it kind of sticks out. Although, I wish I could have it a little bit more forward, but not too bad. The only problem is now i got to deal with this gap up here. Actually, wait a minute. Do I have to deal with the gap? Probably not. Do this. It'll kind of tie it together. And then what I can do is I can put this one here, because I need three total. I can put this one here, and then, well... I kind of have to have it match that side, so I can't. And then if I put one here, I still need another one here. I'm just going to put, like, probably four of them in there and then just kind of underclock them. Eh, it seems like the right thing to do. It's going to be a pain trying to get the pumps to go all the way up this side, but... You know, sometimes you just have to suffer for your art. Ah, uh, there we go. I think that looks pretty cool. Not too bad. Now I need to get rid of those ones over there, and those ones over there, and I want to basically have all the walls looking like this. By the way, these, wa uh, these walls are pretty cool. Let me get some light in here. I just used the inner quarter extension, and I went diagonal with it, and of course just vertical. And there we go. Of course, the wall that I went with, I went with the asphalt, because it actually gives a nice black on the inside, while having the white lighter stuff on the outside. Looks pretty cool. And then we finished up the front of the building. Not too bad. I still need to finish up the other side. As you can see, it's a little bit uh, empty in here. But next, what I want to do is I want to put some buttresses going on this side. So similar to how I have this side with all these different buttresses sticking out, I basically am going to grab those, go over here, and then I want to put these in there. Uh, Actually, you know what? I'm going to probably have to delete this. I can keep these small metal pillars in there, but I'm going to have to delete it like that. So, easiest way to do that, you build two. You can actually aim at the bottom of one. You can aim at the top of one. That'll get you this nice kind of cool thing. And then we'll switch over to the four meter one. We'll go there. And then instead of zooping this, I'll go default. And if I aim correctly right here... I can put in another one, and I can keep going down if I want to, but I don't. So, uh, then we're going to put the 8 meter one going over here. Then we're going to grab just the regular default one, and put that there, and that will be our buttress arc. So, those will be the arcs that hold it in place. Then we'll grab in metal pillars. We'll grab that, and let's see, we'll zoop that up. So we'll have one in the center right there. Then what I can do is I can grab in the small concrete pillars and put that at the four corners. Sorry, not the corners, the center part. Duh. Anyway, you see what I'm doing. And this will get us the pattern that we need to be building this. And this will be pretty cool. Then we just need to do the top part, which is not as bad as it seems. So, metal one, default. Then we switch over to the big one. Then we do the big one, we rotate it so it goes the opposite way. Then we take these, and we're going to put these up there with a little bit of a zoop. So that's going to go up there, no problem, no problem. And, you know, it's just time consuming and really annoying. Not too bad, though. Then we'll switch over to the small support and aim for the center. Turn it upside down. Then we'll put one on each of these. Now this is going to be the top part, the only thing we need left is the awesome shop, and we'll have this thing facing forward. And that will be the top of our buttress, so we'll be able to do that going down here, and then of course we'll have another one just going all the way straight down. Might take them right here and just have it going across so it holds it in place, or just leave it the way it is. Now granted I could have gone even further in, but I don't think I need to. And after some tedious time, I was able to finish this one side. So we have all the buttresses going all the way across, not too bad. Then I fixed up this wall, this wall, and this wall. And one more thing that I forgot to mention is I had to change these to a different material. 
So before, they were the original Fix-It Foundations, but when you originally build them, they had a different color scheme for some reason. I don't know why. And now that we're able to change them to whatever we wanted, I decided that these are regular concrete. This is coated concrete, because of course that was a different one as well. And it looks more uh, fitting for the build, I would say. It really kind of brings it together. Now there's just one more thing, even though I have that center part fixed, I kind of have to do the same thing over here. I have to get rid of all these uh, wall nipple things, whatever. And what the hell happened over here? Where did this come from? Uh, hold please, let's copy that. And we'll paste, and we'll paste. There we go, that's better, that's much better. So yeah, I have to fix up the walls that are going on over here, and I want them to match up the way that I got these going over here. Which is a funny thing too, because like this is just the half foundation, but of course it's the asphalt as well. So that way either on the other side I can still have a nice uh, concrete looking thing over here. But with one side down, it's time to mimic it over here on this side, and then I can start working on the back walls of all those different things, and then maybe the roof? I think I'll start working on the roof. Okay, so I finished this side, made it mirrored to that side, with all the buttresses, and of course our nice giant, uh... What, I don't even know what the hell to call this thing, but it looks cool as hell, and that's all that matters. And I was even uh, able to finish up the top and give it a nice unique look. And one thing I do like about it is, uh, well, if I can actually get in here, hold on a second. One thing I do like about it is I can actually just come in here and just like look off into the distance as if I'm just like overseeing the world. Although it'd be nicer to be a little bit taller so I didn't have to see that. But with that section being finished, I decided that it is time to work on the roof. Because, well, actually just the front part of the roof. I don't want to do the entire back part and go all the way up at the top like I did before. At least just do the front part so I can have enough light to start working on the inside a little bit more. So, yeah, just building out a framework, you know, that's usually how I start with all this stuff. So, this area, now last time I just had the, the tips of it just kind of like go together. But I'm thinking if I put something up here, I can actually put like a, let me get a spiral or something. And then I can do something over here as well, where I have a nice little like square thing that sticks out. You know, just something to give it a little bit extra. And like when you're actually in here and like looking up, you can actually see into the heavens or you know, something cool like that. The idea actually came from this part right here, where we have like this circular area that you can just look up and you can kind of, well, kind of see through. Kind of see through, jeez. That is weird. I don't know why that's doing that because before it was like fine. Maybe I need to make this taller. Maybe I need to put an extra area in here. Hmm, that's uh, definitely giving me something to think about for later. But I definitely want to build out this part of the roof, and uh, most of it is going to be similar to what I had before, except for it's uh, just going to be a tad bit different. So yeah, so first I'll have to start with the framework, and then I'll start building in the detail. Oh, and I did think of one thing. Right here, I could put like little mini buttresses kind of just sticking out for no apparent reason other than it would look cool. And I have a unique idea of what I want to do in this area up top. And just like that, something is made. Finished off changing materials down here. Also finished fixing up the walls. And I gotta say, it looks way better without the wall nipple thingies. As for the roof, I went something similar to what I had before, except for this area right here. I've been doing a lot of these inner corner extensions and whatnot, really putting them diagonal. And it looks much better than what I had beforehand, where I was using a lot of different walls. Uh, using this kind of stuff really bulks it up and makes it a look a lot better. And uh, I like the two-tone look of the asphalt with the regular. As for that, I have a simple build right up here on the top, which kind of looks more like a helipad at the moment. But it really does tie in this section and gives me plenty of room to build whatever I need to up here. Oh, as for this area, this is where I want to put my particle accelerators going forward. So each one of these that's making all this kind of stuff will be able to take all the waste, bring it up to here, and this will turn the waste into... what is it? Plutonium pellets or instant plutonium cells. 
So we'll take all the non-fissile uranium or whatever that I'm going to make and turn it into encased plutonium cells. Oh wait, wasn't there something for the non-fissile that was here? Oh, this will make the plutonium pellets. And then is it the pellets that make... Oh wait, this is the one that skips it. So yeah, this is going to make my plutonium pellets so I can take the non-fissile uranium and more uranium waste to make plutonium pellets. So that way I can get rid of as much as possible without using as much material. Because if we look at the recipe, this is the standard recipe that's going to be in a manufacturer where I take your uranium waste and I use silica, nitric acid, and sulfuric acid, and that'll make non uranium waste. That'll make non fissile uranium as well as water. Now, there is a different one that makes more, but this uses uranium, and we're going to use all the uranium on these down here. So I want to get rid of the waste as much as possible, so all these are going to set to plutonium pellets. So I gotta say, that looks pretty cool and has everything set up quite nicely. Now the only thing left to do is I gotta build all the way across the top, finish that other side over there as well, and you know, just do a little like tidy up stuff. So give me a second. Alright, I completed it. And you can't see anything because of where I'm at right now. So why don't I fly up and show you? Yep, as you can see from one end all the way to the other, I really did put in all that detail. Unfortunately, that is nothing compared to what is left on the roof, as you can see right here. So this side is finished up just like the other. Was even able to finish up the walls and all that kind of stuff over here. So this whole entire area, everything is done and looking good. The only problem I have now is do I want to change... Um... I might have missed a section. Wait, did I miss it on the other side? Oh no, I got it on the other side. That's great, you know. This is perfect for the video. I'm going to leave this in, just so you know I'm human as well. So now that I have this all completed up and all that, I can start working on more stuff inside the base. The reason that it takes so long for one of these videos to be made for this particular build is like once I do something on one side, I have to do it on the other side. Just like when I was building this giant monstrosity right here, I don't want to make a video of literally the exact same thing. But when I do rebuild stuff, sometimes things change up quite a bit. So if I go into here, now from the last video that you saw, this is my uh, aluminum setup, or aluminium, depending on how you want to pronounce it. And I thought that, that this was really cool and everything in here was really great and all that kind of stuff. But unfortunately, when I started building it on the other side, I wanted to test out if there was a different way that I can make this. And after some time, I was able to come up with a well different pattern. And uh, I gotta say, I do like this pattern a lot more. The nice thing about this too is it doesn't really show all the belt work and everything. So when you come in here, all you see is the machines and all that kind of stuff. And having this cut in the center really allows it that I can see, you know, both areas and get a good fixture of like, how grand this one place is because this is the kind of stuff that I want this place to be I want it to feel like it is ginormous each room is its own you know separate little like uh, I don't even know how to put it but you know you get the picture now this area is not complete there is definitely some things I have to do like figure out how to do all the different belt work and how to connect everything going forward so like how am I gonna connect this one with that one down there and I did not finish this area that if you look in the other side, we can actually go fly over there. On this side, I just had a simple setup for all these different smelters going all the way across. Now, this shows off the belt work, but unfortunately, like the one I have over here, I don't want to show off the belt work. So when I start building the smelters over here, I'm going to have to figure out how I'm going to hide all the belt work and all that kind of stuff. And then if I do like it, I'm going to have to basically delete everything over there and sort of like a copy-paste kind of thing. But that's it. Uh, what do you think of the build so far? How do you think it's coming along? Any ideas on what I should add or all that kind of stuff? Or what kind of stuff you want to see? Uh, leave it down in the comments section. But other than that, that is going to be it for today. 
and I will see you all in the next video. Oh, don't forget to subscribe. That would be nice. Other than that, have a good one.